everybody. Hi, everybody. My name is Val. Welcome to Winter Workshop. Today, we are going to be doing this cute little frame wreath. So um, it doubles as a frame. We're going to start with our unfinished wood frame. And you can just keep it like this if you want and just have a square little wreath that you hang up, or you can put a picture in the back when you're done. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you all of the supplies. So we're going to start with a um, unfinished wood frame. Then we've got our tissue squares. And we've got some paint, some sequins to decorate with, some pom-poms to decorate with, some glue. I poured my glue into a a little container, it's just the lid of a jar. Um, and I'll show you why. You don't have to do this, but I'll show you why. And you, you can watch what I'm doing. Um, and then some foam to make a bow when we're done, paintbrush. And then I've got a little container of water here to clean my paintbrush off when I'm done painting. So let's get started. I'm gonna move this aside for now and we're going to go ahead and open our frame. Still got it in the packaging. We'll go ahead and open the plastic. And you get a little um, stick back here. Y'all probably know what that's for, but I'm going to show you anyhow. There's a little hole on the bottom. And when you're done, you can put that little stick in the hole and your frame will stand up. So just put that aside. You don't need that for now. And then I like to pop out the cardboard that's in the middle. Now, when you're done, you can use this as a template to trace around, like say you want to do make a drawing that you want to put in your frame. And you can trace around that and that'll be the right size. And then you can put that in back in the frame behind it if you want. But I can show you that when we're done. Okay. Oh, I just stuck my finger in the glue. Don't do that. All right. I'm going to open my paint. I'm using this bright green. And I'm doing that just so that when... Um, you get your tissue paper on there. If it's if there's any of the frame showing, it's it's already green. And I painted the sides as well. So let's go ahead and paint the frame. You don't need to um, worry about too much about coverage. Just one coat is going to be enough for this one, because like I said, you're just wanting to cover up any areas that will show through. And then there's different ways that we can put the tissue paper on. What I did was I crumpled up the tissue paper and then pressed it on, dipped it in some glue and pressed it on. But you can use it flat if you want. I might try, I might show you a couple of different ways. It'll make my frame look a little bit different, but I'll show you a couple of different ways we can do that. The paint's kind of thick this morning. Got a little bit of water, so it spreads a little easier. I'll show you a little trick. Before I paint all of it, I'm going to not paint this part. I'm going to paint the side so that I can hold it here. I usually don't think that far ahead, and then I have paint all over my hands. But make sure your work surface is covered so you don't get paint on your table. I have a piece of old poster board here. You can use any kind of paper, newspaper, copy paper, plastic tablecloth. I like to use plastic tablecloths when I paint. Just those cheap ones that you get for parties. Okay. Painting the sides. You can also paint the inside of the cutout. See how I'm doing, what I'm doing here. That way you don't have any unfinished wood showing. Your project is finished. If you don't put your paint on too thick, then we won't have to you won't have to wait too long for it to dry. So hopefully mine's not, I don't think mine's too thick. to dry pretty fast. So now I've got to finish my edges.
And finally, that corner. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna put my my uh, paintbrush in the water and clean my paintbrush off. This is a good practice to get into if you, when you're painting and doing crafts with paint, because you want to keep your paintbrushes usable for the next project. So go ahead and clean that off. If you have a paper towel, if you got any paint on your fingers, go ahead and wipe off your hands. I seem to always get paint on me, no matter what I'm doing. Okay. So I have the green, dark green, you know, Kelly green, I guess I call it, tissues, and then the bright green. Now in the project, I used all of this color, the, the Kelly green, and that's what I'm gonna use, but you could mix them up, um, dark green and light green. So the way we start with the tissue paper is we're just gonna take one, we're gonna crumple it up just like that. I'm just gonna lay it right there for you to see. And then just stick the bottom of it in some glue. Stick it right on your frame, just like that. You see that? Okay. So this is going to take a little while because there's a lot to fill. So just go ahead and get started. Always remember that if uh, if I'm going faster than you, you can stop the video catch up. A lot of times what I like to do when I'm taking a class is I like to watch the class. I like to watch the video first all the way through and see what they're doing. And then I know the steps that are coming and what to anticipate. So you can do that as well if you'd like. You can always just add some glue to your to little areas on your frame. Like I'll show you. I'm gonna take a brush because I've already got my glue poured out into a cup. But you could, could add a little glue just a little bit at a time because it does dry pretty fast. And then try just putting a tissue paper right on that too. So there's different ways that you can do it. But you do need to use a wet glue as opposed to a glue stick. I think the, I mean, a glue stick might work, but you're going to get a better result, I think, from this wet glue, from the craft glue. I call it wet glue because it has to dry. Okay. When I get to the bottom on this side, I'm going to show you a different technique we can do. I think this might be the, the quickest way because you're just kind of scrunching them up and sticking them down. Scrunch and stick. Okay, I'm gonna go on this corner and I'm gonna show you something else you can do. And this would go really faster too if you wanted to do it this way. So I'm just gonna put some glue on the bottom of that and you can just lay your tissue just like that now that might be a fun area to do some of this bright green, bright green and alternate and overlap you're going to have to wrap it because it's bigger than the frame that's easy enough you can just do that so that's another way you can do it. Okay. Well, I think when I get done with this frame, I'm going to put a picture of my dog in it. Well, she's cute. You can draw a picture. This would make a nice present too for the holidays. Make this for your teacher or one of your parents or another adult, grandma, grandpa. 
can be a decoration in your house. You could hang it like a wreath. It doesn't have to be a frame. You just hang it up like a wreath. Because that's what we're imitating here is a wreath. Most wreaths are round and most wreaths are made of pine needles or something like along those lines, something from the outdoors. That's how they started. I always put something on my door. This would be too small for my door. I probably wouldn't want to put this outside. But I think, uh, I think uh, anybody who got this as a present, if you wanted to make it as a present, would think it was pretty special. You know, I'm finding that rather than dipping my tissue paper into the glue, putting some glue onto the frame little sections it seems to be working pretty good. I can go a little faster. And this is pretty, um, I don't want to say spontaneous. You don't have to worry too much about planning. You don't have to worry about how you're crumpling your paper. It's just kind of fun to scrunch it up and stick it down. Again, we're just scrunching it up and sticking it down. So once we get all this on, we're going to decorate it with sequins and pom-poms. Really add anything you want that you have in your craft stash. But for this project, we've used sequins. And then I pulled out green and red pom-poms. But just like this wreath, I'm making it green, but you can make it any color you want. So if you want a purple wreath, go for it. You can paint your base the same color as your tissue paper, or you can paint your base a contrasting color from your tissue paper so that it peeks through. So then you have kind of a two-tone look, two colors to show. So that'd be kind of fun. If you love pink, make a pink wreath and put purple pom-poms on it. It doesn't have to be green. Mine's kind of traditional. This is going a little faster than I thought it might. We're almost around the, the last corner. So our winter workshop classes are really fun this year. Um, be sure to look up all, all of the classes that we have online. I'll be teaching some other ones as well. 12 days winter workshop. So that means there's 12 classes. You can look up and follow along. All the supplies should be listed and you have to do is sit in front of your computer and get your workspace ready. Okay, there's my wreath. Now I am, I did use a paintbrush. It's an old paintbrush and I am rinsing it out really good because I don't want the glue to stick in it. Otherwise the paintbrush will be ruined, but you can, you don't need to use the paintbrush to put your glue down like I did, but that's just how I got started. Okay, so there's my wreath. Now I've got some pom-poms over here and some sequins over here. So I am going to just start gluing on some sequins. I'm gonna use some colorful ones. Now this part, I will probably get glue on my fingers and so probably will you. If you want to keep a, a paper towel that's been made damp nearby to wipe off your fingers. I use baby wipes sometimes. You have those laying around. You have a little baby in your family. You might have some of those. It's one of my favorite craft supplies. 
baby wipes because they're always wet. Unless I leave them open, then they're not wet anymore. Okay. I'm going to go all the way around, spacing them out so that I'll have room to put my pom poms on as well. I'm looking for the bigger sequins in this pile. My little dog just came in my room. I'll show you a picture of her. Here, how's she coming? She wants to say hi. Here's my little dog. Hi, everybody. She likes to craft with me. She came in from outside and was crying to come see you. I see one sticking to my fingers. Just gonna do a couple more, and then we will put our pom poms on. Seems like all my big ones are silver and purple and red. Okay, there we go. There's that. Now, so I'm gonna show you the finished project. So you can see. I made little clusters of the pom-poms, kind of like holly berries might be. If you ever see Christmas decorations with holly, holly's a popular Christmas decoration. So that's kind of what I'm mimicking here. So I just have some pom-poms. Now you're gonna need to put some glue and really press on there because sometimes those pom-poms don't like to stick. And then my little red ones would be like a berry. Just like that. I'm going to leave this top corner empty because that's where I'm going to put my bow. If you want to put your bow someplace else, kind of be thinking about where you want to put your bow so that you leave a space for it, okay? But I'm going to put mine right there. And you can put as many or as few um, of these pom-poms on as you want. It doesn't need too many, but it just adds a little interest to your project. Okay, I think that's, I'm gonna put one down here, put a couple down here. One more, okay. All right, I'm gonna move all these other supplies out of the way and I'm gonna set this guy aside to dry and we will talk about making a bow. So I made this bow with some foam, with some red foam. If you have ribbon laying around, you can certainly make a ribbon bow and stick it on. Um, you're gonna wanna hot, have to hot glue this on. So you're gonna need an adult to help with that if, if you have a, a an adult around that has a hot glue gun. Um, if not, you can just use a lot of glue, but it's going to take a while to dry. So you're just going to have to press it. You might even want to put something heavy on it to keep it in place. Okay, so let me show you how we made the bow. So first, we're just going to cut a strip. And that's going to be how wide your bow is. That's going to be this width of your bow. So let's see, I'm going to cut it's about an inch, but you just, you don't have to be exact. You can measure it, but try, try to cut it kind of straight. Then you're going to roll, fold the ends in. So it's going to look just like that. And you're going to gather the, you're going to overlap the ends in the middle. And then you're going to take a stapler. And staple it to secure it. Now, the reason I'm using a stapler is because you could use glue, but it's just gonna take a while to dry and you're gonna have to put something on it to hold it in place, okay? 
Um, so if you want to do that, that's fine. You just have to do this in steps and come back and see the rest of the video after it dries. So now we're going to make um, the loop that kind of comes around the center. So let's see. I'm going to cut a piece, uh, think about that long, and then about like that. I think my, my pieces are all about an inch. If, if you want to measure it, that's fine, but you don't have, certainly don't have to measure. Nope, that's not quite long enough because I'm going to want to, well, you know what I'm going to say? As long as we got the hot glue gun out, this is where you might, you're going to need help. I'm going to have to glue these ends in place. And be really careful about using a hot glue gun. If, you're use, if your parents let you use it, just be careful that glue gets really hot. And I have burned myself many, many times. So I'm just going to press and hold for a minute. Okay, there we go. Whoop. Didn't have enough glue and it was not quite cooled off. That glue dries as it cools. Okay, so this is what our bow is going to look like. Now I'm going to make these little tails. Now, if you tied a bow, that would be part of your of your tying part. But I'm going to cut a little bit of foam for the tails. Now, I want them to be about the same width. So I'm going to lay one on top of the other and cut it so that they're equal, roughly. So this is what you'll be doing. You have a bow and your little tails, just like that. So first, before we, we cut, we uh, glue it, I'm gonna show you, see how I cut little triangles in the bottom? That's just how a lot of bows are cut and it makes it look nice. So I'm gonna do that. And to do that, what you can do is fold your foam in half, like that and cut from the pointy end up to the middle. And then you have that. Here's my other tail. Let me get rid of my scraps. Fold it in half. Roll it just like that. Now you can do this with, like I said, ribbon, with construction paper, with cardstock, with you know other, other items. We're just using the foam because we have this for this project. So that's how my bow's gonna look. So I am going to put a little hot glue there in there. I'm going to lay them like that and press my bow in place. And I'm just going to hold it, give the glue a little time to cool off. And there's my bow. So let's get our frame. That's where I'm going to put my bow. So. Put some glue on there. Press it and hold. Knocking over all of my supplies. Right. That's, my frame is now put together. So if you have a picture, so this opening is, I believe, I'm going to measure it. So I can tell you for sure, I think it's four by six. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger than four by six. So a four by six photo, which is a standard size printed photo would fit in there just nicely. And um, if you're going to draw a picture, Again, I would use the template that came in it to draw around it. I want to see if I have, oh, I do. 
I'm going to show you a picture. There we go. Okay, let's see. I've got some photos here. I think I have one of my dog. There it is. There's my dog. Put it in the frame just like that. See these metal things back here? So they're going to be hard to do, but you, you could take your thumb. You might want to have an, a, an adult help you with this and push them up. Because when you push them back down, that's what holds your picture in. So I'm going to put my picture of my puppy in there. And then I've got my, this came out of it, right? So I'm going to put that behind it just to give it some more stability. And then you push these back down. Oh, some of my pom-poms came off. We're going to glue them back on. Because the glue takes a while for the glue to dry. So you might want to, before you handle it to put your picture in, you might want to let everything dry. It went there. And there we go. What do you guys think? I think this was a fun project. Um, I think this is going to be one of my Christmas decorations. So that's that's the project, you guys. I, I hope you had fun making it. Um, like I said, if it goes along too fast, go ahead and just stop the video, catch up. If you want to let something dry, you can just always restart the video again. So I hope you guys had fun. I'd love to see your, your projects that you made. Um, if you want to put them on our Facebook page and just do... Um, do hashtag make it with Michaels and we'll be able to see it. I'd love to see your projects. So thanks for joining me today, guys. And um, I will see you again soon. Bye.